Hello again, it's uh, Senior Mike uh, talking about his stuff. Today's episode is about my electric car EV, my EV again, and um, we're going to be talking about charging. That is the topic that everybody wants to ask you about. Uh, what's it like to charge your car? What's, all, what's it all about? So today we're going to just be talking about that. We'll concentrate on uh, issues about charging at home and we'll be debunk debunking a few myths about charging. First one is if you have a non-Tesla car, that the uh, charging is easy. And the answer is no. Uh, the second debunking will be that you can plug your car into a regular outlet and charge your car uh, practically. The answer is no. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, uh, the other one is, um, <clears throat> okay, well, I'll just get into it now. The, the uh, dealers or the uh, auto manufacturers always like to uh, um, give you charging times from zero to 100. That is something you will probably never do. You rarely, unless you're on a long trip, but everyday driving, that's not what it's all about. I purchased uh, my EV for mostly everyday driving and I have a uh, gasoline car for uh, long trips. So. Uh, everyday driving, uh, EVs are extremely practical and extremely good and cheap, etc. And that's what most people do. So, um, excuse me, EVs uh, in that regard are here to stay, I think. But uh, long distance charging is another topic which we'll talk about also. So, um, the uh, first myth is charging. Uh, with an ele uh, 110. Hey, by the way, you'll notice there's uh, leaves on the trees today. It's been a couple weeks since I've done a video, video here in Edmonton, and the leaves have all come out in the last week and a half. So anyway, getting back to charging at home. Uh, the charging uh, times for plugging your car in, of course, it always depends on, um, on how much you have to charge. So again, the manufacturers will quote, um, charging from uh, 0 to 100. Um, my, my car, for example, that's eight hours on a 200, 240 volt plug. Uh, they don't even mention it on 110 because it's probably 36 hours, but you hardly ever do that. I'm driving my car around town on my, I'm retired, I'm not commuting, so I'm driving around, you know, 50 or 60 kilometers a day in little things. I go from 80% down to, at the most, 60%. So that's just a 20% charge that takes me barely an hour <clears throat> at a 240 plug. So um, uh, that's the first thing to, to uh, understand when you read the EV uh, statistics, that that long charging time from uh, zero to 100 is kind of the worst case scenario, not gonna happen very often. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, the first thing you will learn when you get a car EV is that the manufacturers tell you not to charge it above 80% unless you're going on a long trip. The reason for that is that uh, charging to 100 uh, stresses the battery. The battery gets hotter, so they slow the process down and it's not great for the battery. So that's the first thing they'll tell you. And they also tell you not to let it go down to less than 10% uh, unless you have to. So yeah, so the 10% to 80% charge number is probably much more relevant in terms of uh, uh, your everyday charging. So um, that's the first thing you learn about it. And that 80% level and all that kind of stuff, that's all controlled by your car software or your phone, etc. We'll get into that in a little in a few minutes. Um, so uh, practicality wise, for example, I plugged my car in uh, when I was at 60% and I had it set for uh, 80%. And I believe the charging time was going to be about uh, 12 hours. So that's why I'm telling you that uh, if you have uh, uh, an EV, you should be looking into adding the investment for a 240 plug. When I plug it in for that same amount of time, 60 to 80% with a, a 240 plug, which is, uh, uh, I think I get 47 uh, kilowatts, um, you are going to get uh, about a charging time of about uh, an hour and 10 minutes or something. I will be showing you uh, videos of that in a minute. Uh, so that's that uh, topic. 
Uh, the other topic is uh, um, superchargers. Well, we'll get into that supercharger issue uh, while we're talking about other stuff. Um, oh, that may, maybe I will get into it now. That's another thing you have to learn about, superchargers versus regular chargers. So uh, the terminology for chargers is uh, level one, which is um, a 110 outlet. Level two is anything above, uh, they'll be called level two, everything above um, a 240 volt or probably about a 50 to 40 amp uh, circuit, which you can put in your house. And the last thing is superchargers. Superchargers are all commercial ones. They'll all be charging you uh, for the time uh, that you're plugged in. Uh, and they are up to 350 uh, watts. Now they, not all cars take that amount. Very few cars actually take 350. Uh, mine, for example, the BMW i4 takes up to 180 watts. Now we're talking charging that at that kind of a level, you'll be 10 to 80% will probably be in the 15 to 20 minute range. I uh, haven't done that yet, so we'll get into that at some other point. Uh, so yeah, that's a few topics that we'll, we'll cover in detail. Uh, next uh, video, by the way, is gonna be about all this math. Uh, I'll be using a whiteboard or some sort of a device to show you uh, what the math's all about because the way they, uh, it's very confusing all the wattages and, and sizes of batteries and all that kind of stuff, but I have a fairly simple way of uh, explaining that. Okay, so I'll be, uh, let's go and look at the car right now. Well, okay, let's talk about the uh, charging process now. Now, well, as you can see, the car has a uh, charging port right there in the back where in BMW, it's the uh, same place as where the gas station is. And let's just open it up here. Oop, car's uh, locked. So you have to actually unlock the car and you have to unlock the car when you want to unplug it too, by the way. Okay, so it's unlocked. There it is, so that's what it looks like. And then now for uh, just a plain charge with the, what we're gonna to do today, the uh, 240 plug, that's what it looks like. Get up close. Get a little shade there. And then if it's a, charge, a DC charger, like the fast charger, you open up the bottom thing. That's a big, huge uh, uh, charging, um, uh, <clears throat> plug. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's what that looks like. Let's leave that for now. And over here is my setup for my charger. So there's the charger on the wall, the big plug. And now this thing actually comes off. Let's just do it now. So I unplug it totally here and then just lift it off. Let's just show you what it looks like. So this is so it's basically a, uh, a control box, brick they call them, I guess. It's got a 240 plug on this end, like that, which plugs into my industrial 240 plug. I'll talk about that in a second. And then it's got the big long cable. I think it's, uh, uh, I think it's 15 feet. And then the end is the charging device gonna do uh, show you on the end what it looks like there you go so it's got a little clip on it that when you plug it in it uh, holds it together uh, same plug and they're a little they're made out of plastic etc uh, they recommend that you do not install one of those one do not install it yourself to uh, industrial size metal like that because a dryer plug is not meant to be operated uh, you know, for eight hours at one, at once. And uh, so that uh, that could get hot. And secondly, if you install it yourself and don't do it properly, you could uh, do have something a little loose or whatever. And that will charge, uh, cause an arc to uh, to develop. And that's where uh, fires start. So that's what they say, why they say it should be professionally installed. Let's look at the size of that cable that I have there. The reason it's so thick is because it's exposed. Normally, if it was in the wall, it wouldn't quite be that hard. Mine, uh, when I had this installed uh, as part of a solar project, it had to go all the way around my whole garage. Sorry, it's pretty in, uh, uh, busy looking. All the way around to the back of that uh, extended garage and came through the, the um, uh, sill of the house to, from the basement 
and they had a big circuit. I'll show you that circuit uh, downstairs a little bit later. But anyway, that's why, uh, you know, they often tell you it's going to cost uh, $1,000 uh, $1, to $1,500 to install uh, 240 plug because it requires a new circuit. Well, okay, let's go through the um, charging process here. So the car is now in uh, ready mode, which means it's ready to drive. Uh, so I put it in drive, it would go. Right now it's in park. So as soon as you turn it off, boom, it shows you a couple of things. It says charging uh, immediately. If you want to charge, you can charge immediately to 50%, or you can activate the preconditioning um, or precondition to a time. Preconditioning means uh, um, cooling off the inside of the cabin. Right now it's, uh, or the car, it's super hot right now, but, uh, or uh, heating it up if it's cold. Uh, we'll talk about preconditioning some other time. So yeah, so now it's saying it's set to, it's telling me it's set to charge to 50% of the battery. My battery currently, if you look down there, is 34%, which gives me a range of 124. So that's not what I wanna do. I'm gonna show you how to change that setting right now to uh, the 80% mode. So let's just do that. I think if I hit it right now, yes it will. So it goes to the charging menu. So now I'm gonna put it up to uh, 80%. That's the charging target is going to be 80%. I've got a limit here. The other thing you have to set is the limit of the circuit that you're going to be using. So my limit is currently set at 48 amps. That's, uh, that's uh, for my um, 50 amp circuit. But if you were going to do uh, plug it into the wall, which we'll try again later just to show you uh, how long it would take if I did that. So that you would change it uh, by, by ooh, somehow function currently before increasing current check the power supply is suitable okay so I want to actually decrease it oh there you have to touch that so yeah see you can change it like that so I'm gonna set it back to 48 my current my limit uh, and that is for AC so that's the limit I think for uh, AC at some point if it's DC it goes higher than that direct current again we'll talk about all that stuff uh, some other time so now I'm set I'm ready uh, for the charging mode immediately. So I just gotta go outside and we'll uh, show you how to do that. Pretty easy. Uh, a pretty simple process. Now you see I've replugged uh, my uh, brick into the wall. It's showing blue, I don't know if the blue color comes out. So the blue tells me that uh, that part of the system is ready to charge. Um, yeah, so that stays on all the time. We'll walk around here. And I'll just open up the charging port. The car's unlocked, that's why it opened. Press the top button here. See a white light there. Now I'm just gonna pick up my charger cable and plug it in. Boom. Watch the light, should change yellow. And when it starts to charge, blue. Change it to blue. Blue means you're now charging. So inside the car, let's go back to inside the car. It will tell me a bunch of stuff. So here it's saying, uh, what does it tell me? A nice pretty picture of the car getting its juice through the cable. So now it's telling me I've set a target of 80% and it's saying it will be at 80% at uh, 631. It is currently 230 basically. So it's telling me that it's gonna take four, uh, 230 to, yeah, it's gonna take four hours to fill this car from whatever we said it was, 34% to uh, 80%. And it's also telling me that it is uh, charging at nine kilowatts uh, currently with a maximum of 11 kilowatts. I believe that is kilowatts per hour. So that's that. That tells me over here that maximum Current is set at 40 amps. And what else does it say down there? This is giving me my range. My range when I get, the, oh yeah, there it is, 35. My currently at 35%. My range is 125 kilometers. Sorry for you American folks, you'll have to do the calculations yourself. Now I get the 80%, I will be at 287 kilometers. 
which is probably about the right, correct range here for this. This car supposedly has a hundred percent range. When I get a hundred percent battery, you're gonna get a range of uh, 400 kilometers. So that's probably just about right. Okay, so that's uh, that's the scoot. That's all you do. Now you just sit here. When it gets to 80%, the car will shut or the charger will shut off, and away we go. Well, just for fun, we are going to try uh, changing all this to uh, plug it into a regular 110 outlet. The first thing I have to do is change the limit for the current down to what they had it set for. Function not available. Before changing, check the power supply is suitable for higher values. I don't want to change it. I want to make it smaller. How do we do that? Uh, there we go. Uh, it was set for seven amps before. That may be a little too low. Maybe I'll try putting it at uh, 10 amps. Or just a regular wall plug it should be like 15 amps or something like that 15 amp circuit so I'm gonna try that and see if it will actually work and we'll just do a quick uh, uh, comparison to the 40 amp plug okay so now I've uh, plugged it in if you can see it way over there I plugged it into my wall uh, just a regular 110 outlet I set it for 10 amps, which I'm not sure. The car, when it came, was set for seven amps as a default, so I'm not quite sure if 10 was too much, but I mean, it's a 15 amp circuit, so that's why I didn't have a problem with that. And then, now what it's saying is, to get to the, um, to get to the 80% uh, percent, uh, 80 charge, it is going to take until five o'clock tomorrow morning that's 0500 uh, so it's currently 2 30 in the afternoon so it's gonna take all night uh, until tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock in the morning so that's good to get to that 80% level so I told you before uh, to get to a hundred percent level uh, it, it, from 80% to hundred percent is slower so can you imagine if I was trying to put it to 100%? So just to show you, that was this little exercise was just to show you that it's not very practical to be uh, charging your full electric vehicle um, with a wall plug. Uh, not gonna be very practical. I wouldn't be able to drive this car because it's at 35% right now, so that's not that much. Uh, with a plug-in hybrid, uh, maybe a wall plug would, uh, a regular wall plug would do. Maybe like overnight or a few hours. Plus you have a gas engine and a plug-in hybrid, so you don't have to worry about it as much. But um, my point is, if you have an EV, uh, you better have a 240 plug. All right, the last little bit, uh, I got it plugged back in, uh, back into the uh, 40 amp um, or 50 amp circuit. And I set it for 100%. Remember, uh, it's a little bit, actually a little bit downwind for a little drive there. It was a 35 or 36 before. Um, and it was going to be at uh, 6.30, I believe, or um, um, 18.30. Now it's 21.49, so that was four hours before, so now that's going to be it's now 4.30. So that's 16, 16 plus, so that's five and a quarter hours for uh, the 80% charge. So, actually, that's not that bad. I thought it would be worse than that. 2100 is 949, and it is, yeah, six and a half hours. So, a couple of hours for that last 20%. So, not that much difference. To do the math uh, at some point there once I, I sit back and watch. I just wanted to add that little bit. 